Creativity is an addiction. Unplugged because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Defrag. Defrag is asking the questions and questioning the answers. I do this in two forms of mediums, and one of them is sitting down with a notebook, sheets of paper, physical paper with a writing instrument and asking the questions because I believe the whole body becomes a part of the system of choices when you write whereas when you type you're just using your fingers and your mind but I want the whole body to get involved those inner voices need to be activated by something so I keep it in a notebook and number two when we go out on these transition walks a transition walk through a forest in South Charlotte North Carolina where the goal is to connect with nature It's to come out here as a listener. But our heads are so full of so much content. The challenges, the changes, the defeats, some of the victories. We don't talk much about the victories unless it's a really good victory. But, you know, something so simple is left behind. So you've got to learn how to ask the questions and then question the answers. And you're not always going to like what you get. But as you transition, you see a better you. You feel better about you. And more importantly, you start sharing a lot more of you with others who are traveling beside you. The subject that I want to jump onto right now, I don't know if you're going to be able to dive into it as deep as I really want to go because I don't know where you are in the chapters that you write. But I want to talk about modern day broadcasting. It it surprises me that so many people have jumped into podcasting, which is is amazing to my heart. That's the reason why I created a podcast called Pod Crashing. It's designed to share the stories of other podcasters, who, what, where, why, when, and how it even happened. In fact, I'll be with Jason Alexander from Seinfeld next week to talk about his podcast. But I, I love the idea when people do approach me to ask questions about podcasting. But I'm also kind of, I'm not troubled, but I question when people that I haven't seen in a long time step through the glass and they say, hey, I'm thinking about I want to get into radio. And I kind of stop for a moment and I go, radio. Okay, now define for me what you think radio is. Are we talking about terrestrial radio, listening through the dashboard of your car or on, on a radio uh, connected to maybe your, your, your home system? What, what is radio in your life? And the answers that I get are all over the place. They'll come up with every reason why they want to get into radio. And the majority of the time is because I love music. I love sports. I love talking about the news. I get it. I get it. But what we have to do is define what you think radio is. Now, I'm a, I'm a broadcast instructor. I've been doing that since 1988. And, and so I've, I've grown with many, many very talented people and have watched them reach global levels because they took a chance on this thing called radio. But let's go back to 1988 and let's define what radio was back then. The da- dashboard of a car. It's what we had sitting on our desk at work. It was right there with us at all times. I had a transistor radio when I was a kid. But in 2023, radio is your smartphone. It's streaming. It's watching videos. It's making your own videos. It's creating your own internet radio station. So as I was talking with this gentleman who wrote to me this morning, what's so surprising is that I knew him when he was barely six years old. And now that he's wearing adult shoes, he's just reaching out. He's got a love for music. He's, he's got this desire in his heart, which I love it when people share that kind of stuff with me. When they, when they say that, hey, look, I really think I should be telling the story of music and I, I want to do a radio show. Now, did I say anything about going to a school of broadcasting? Absolutely not. That's something that you have to pick up on your own and really develop because that is a lot of money in a very short amount of time. And if it doesn't pay off, you've lost a lot of money because of that short amount of time. It was probably about two years ago when the idea occurred to me when I'm with students and they're sharing with me the answer to this question. Who the hell are you, and why the hell are you here? 
And I hear their stories. I digest their stories because I want to build with them in the five short weeks that I'm personally going to be with them. The question is, in the process of you wanting to be a communicator, why do we have to put such a label as radio on it? I rarely hear of anybody who says, well, I want to go into television. That in itself is evolving in huge ways with the streaming. And, and what is I keep seeing all these different things on Facebook that go, you can create your own TV station. Yes, you can. But can you maintain your own TV station? Can you maintain your own internet radio station? Can you afford the royalties that you need to pay out? Because this music isn't free. And the pictures that you want to put up on your, on your internet TV station, they're not so free either. I mean, sure, you can go out and you can make your own stories. Now we're talking about the price of loyalty, dedication, determination. The vision of what you're going to do, and when things don't go your way, how are you going to change as a person? You see what I'm doing here? I'm defragging. I'm asking questions, and then I will question answers. And when you move through those little moments where you have a day of doubt, or you have that little situation where you go, I know this can work, but I can't figure out where are the people. Okay, a lot of podcasters talk about that. They talk about where are the people. And if you go onto LinkedIn, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be knocking on your door saying, hey, I can lead you to the people. But are they real people? Are they real? Or are they just a bunch of numbers? Bots, as they call them. B-O-T-S. How do you get by that kind of a situation where you've invested a lot of money to get somebody to help you find the people? But to me, the challenge is not that. They can show me where the people are. Can you keep the people? See, I'm doing it again. I'm defragging. I'm asking the questions, then questioning the answers. I would love it if everybody had a podcast. I would love to hear some of the podcasts that are coming out of Ukraine or the podcast of those who were forced to leave Russia because they didn't want to fight the war, but they're living in another country and they're trying to get the word out there because the availability is there. At one point in time, having that free voice wasn't always available on terrestrial radio or on regular television. But these days, because of streaming, what's stopping you? I, I suggest Anchor.fm, which is connected to Spotify. It's free. Most digital platforms will give you a little bit of space to say what you need to say or to create what you want to create. But you've got to ask the questions and question the answers. Can you afford where you're trying to grow? If you're feeling that moment... It's not Facebook. It's not Instagram. It's not TikTok. It is your voice. Are you going to show up for a couple of episodes? Or are you going to show up for a lengthy stay? Create your own seasons. You're asking the questions. The answers come out. You think, okay, I got it. Then make it happen. And be loyal to it. It's a Saturday where I am right now. A Saturday. Most people on Saturdays... They don't do anything. They, they don't work they, because it's a, it's a time off. Or if they've got an essential job, they're about ready to go to work there. I was in the studio. That's what it's all about. There are no days of rest when it comes to podcasting. Sure, you can put up one episode a week. It all depends what you're doing. I happen to put up several because I'm a radio guy that happened to jump into podcasting back in 2012. And I've had to thin out my expectation by asking the questions and questioning the answers. Where I used to put in anywhere between 9 to 12 hours a day inside the studio doing the interviews, editing, you know, and, and posting and promoting. Now, I give myself only so much time because you can oversaturate your presentation. And when you oversaturate it, the listener is going to go, too much. I'm getting too much of this guy. He's driving me totally insane. So ask the questions and question the answers. So if you were to create an internet radio station, what would you put on it? What type of music? I've got two very, very close friends that have their own internet radio stations, and they're both doing pretty incredible. But to get there has required a lot of money and a lot of work, especially when I said, you got to pay for the music. you got to pay the royalties. One of them features nothing 
but monkeys music. Monkeys, the, the 1960s band, it features only that music. It's a monkeys channel. Another one has based their internet connection to several different styles of music. It's called R Beats. And, and she has done such an amazing job at staying true to what her dream was in making those connections with not only present day electronic DJs, but to other entertainers who are trying to just get their music out there and to be heard. She's, she's done a beautiful job. I'm so proud of what she has done. And what's so funny is that uh, um, she was one of my students and I'm just, she's one of those people that has gone global. And with, with Alan and the Monkeys Channel, uh, he's just been a very good friend of mine for 35 years. But I knew they were hungry for it. And that word hungry is a very valuable word. Are you hungry enough to see it through? Or will you become a part of the clutter? And the only way to find that answer out, don't, don't listen to me, but I'm just going to say, the only way to find out that answer is to give it a shot. Take a chance. Find out where you are. I mean, I've got a very good friend. His name is Bill. Bill was one of my students as well. Bill did pretty good in sports radio as a producer. But he's been after me for several years to start a podcast. I'm going to start it, man. I'm going to start it. And then he finally told me this year. I says, I want to start it on March 1st. I, I want to start my own podcast. He said he would start it on March 1st. Today is March 18th. He's yet to have started it. He's still playing around with the idea of, I don't know what to talk about. And I hear that a lot. I don't know what to talk about. Hey, I, I do a podcast. It's called CTCS. It's about me working at a grocery store and sharing the experiences from theft to sex in the bathroom to whatever with people who happen to be retail people as well. The listeners come in. And, and they, they, uh, it's, it's amazing how people react to something so simple like that. How do you start a podcast? What do you want to make it about? Ask the questions and question the answers. I also have a podcast that deals with creative spirituality. Why? Why would you be so open with the way that you feel? I, I couldn't bear my soul the way that you bear your soul. Yes, you could. If you believe in the person who's going to receive then you will show up. That's where you find your dedication, your loyalty, and your determination. Who are you trying to reach? Why do you want to reach them? What do you foresee the connection becoming? It's amazing. And that could be a radio guy who happens to be wearing a pair of podcasting boots. Ask the questions. Question the answers. I'm taking a walk through a forest. It's an episode of a podcast. Why? I ask that question all the time. And the answer that I get is because in your world, maybe you're not taking that walk until today. And then you go out there and you start receiving answers. And then you put it on a page. I'm Errol, and that's Deep Rag.